Uh, we're rolling right now, so go okay. ahead, Martin. Well, the transmitter starts with the master oscillator assembly here, which is an 807. I'm crystal controlled. I like it that way. The 807 oscillator drives an 813. The 813 and its tank circuit and its tuning circuit then drive the 810s, which is the final amplifier. So there's the, there's the PA, folks. Right there. Here's the PA tank circuit, the PA tuning, and PA neutralization. This is the RF bus, nice short leads now, that go across the cabinet over to the tank loading system. Now I'll, I'll have to stop rolling a second and you... Okay, Martin. Okay, we have the RF then goes uh, from the tank circuit across into the loading side, which is the plate loading capacitor right here and part of the loading system. And here, these are the 810 modulators. The 810 modulators are driven by a pair of six L6s down here. I hope that's right. Yes, the, yes they are. Six L6s. And remember, these six L6s then are driven by the Heathkit audio amplifier, which is external. The rest of the stuff in here is, is the various control circuits and so forth. The majority of them are are what was in the transmitter when uh, Gates uh, produced it for broadcast. I've only incorporated a very few things. One was an antenna changeover relay and a control circuit down here to incorporate my push to talk. Push to talk has to do several things. It's got to mute the oscillator uh, in the transmitter and it's also got to switch the antenna circuits and has to key the main contactor to put B plus onto the transmitter. All of the power supplies are located in the bottom of the transmitter. Could you point uh, out some of the iron, Martin? Yes, I can. Uh, it's a little dark in here. We, and, uh, we, ha we start here with the plate transformer. And here is, uh, I've put in solid state uh, diodes uh, for the uh, high voltage and took out the 8008 mercuries because mercury's kept firing over on me. They were getting old and tired. We have the modulation transformer back here, the reactor, and various chokes. And it's just a very basic uh, power supply. It's powered by 220 volt single phase. There's nothing in this transmitter that was 110 volt, so I had to put in a step-down transformer down here of my own so I could get 110 volts for various controls that I needed. So Martin, for someone who, uh, like yourself, uh, has an interest in getting a broadcast transmitter on the air, which you've done, mm -hmm. uh, you would recommend that maybe first they consider uh, getting some 220 service uh, in their shack or in their, in their ham shack. You almost have to. If you're going to buy a broadcast transmitter, there's several things to watch out. Make darn sure that you don't get one that's powered at 440 volt three phase because if you have that you're going to have trouble getting that sort of power into a residential home without, quite an, without a lot of expense. But the majority of the transmitters from 250 watts to up to 5,000 watts are in fact powered by 220 volt single phase. And you'll need a service of about 20 to 30 amps uh, uh, of uh, 220 to give you adequate power. I'm going to throw a switch over here and we're going to turn the filaments on. All right.